French Glen is our last stop on this trip through Oregon's outback. It is remote, but the valley influence is much more apparent here. Something about the Steens Mountains seems to separate the west from Oregon's far east. Everybody sort of walks a balancing act or something, you know, trying to figure out exactly how to get along with everybody. <laughs> Longtime ranchers whose families homesteaded here. In the summer here, we're fairly busy. I see over 10,000 people a year in the hotel. And the tourists and newcomers who may define themselves as environmentalists. French Glen has been rediscovered. Around 1920, they moved the store. It was a little common for the pea ranch. They moved it, they moved basically the whole town here away from the pea ranch to make a, a headquarters. French Glen was first called Sum Range. Cattle rancher Pete French and his father-in-law, Hugh Glenn, started the town in 1872, these round barns. There were three of, the, of this particular design. To train teams of horses, a revolutionary idea for its time. Historian, rancher, and landowner Dick Jenkins tells the tale of Pete French's final day. He was a very forceful person, and, and that's what met his demise. He, he had thumped on this neighboring homesteader several times prior. And the neighbor killed French on the spot. His legacy, the barns, and the town that bears his name. You know, when you drive through town, it really doesn't look a whole lot different. That's John Ross, caretaker of the French Glen Hotel. The hotel's gotten a little bigger, but uh, the outhouse has moved, and that's about it. <laughs> the local store is open sometimes. Gas, yeah, if you call ahead or hit it at the right time. That could change if a new owner steps in. Make it known it's, it's up for sale. <laughs> There's a school, less than 10 people who live in town, a few homes, a shop that opens, we think. The Steens Mountain became famous back in 2000. Landowners and environmentalists cut a deal. A management act to protect the mountain and allow ranchers to still graze animals here to avoid creating a national monument. It's a fight, but I mean, they do realize that sometimes you have to get together and work on things. And, and that's sort of a unique thing that's happened here. Uh, I mean. I'm not going to say that they get along on everything because they don't. Some ranchers now close off their property, property that you spent. Uh, they may not do things, you know, perfect all the time, but they're, you know, they're trying to be as good to the land as possible. Some folks, you know, come from the valley and see something that they don't like, you know, and they're sitting there, well, you can't do them. Well, yeah, we can. and. You can't come on here now. <laughs> so what is it about this country, about that mountain or Kiger Gorge that still brings people here? From the valley floor, it's just a mountain. In mid-June when we were there, the snow clothed road. Only way in, on foot. Is this going to be a long hike going up there? Wait, they said about three miles. See that look on John's face? That's what doubt looks like. Three miles up? He didn't say any more. We camera, a big camera, the tripod, and we walked to the top. By the way, it wasn't three miles, it was more like four and a half. That's nine miles up and back. So why make the climb? For that picture, what a view. This is what ranchers and environmentalists fight to protect. A way of life and a mountain. Wide open spaces, a lot of people like it, a lot of people are like, almost scared of it. I mean, you know, they come out and they're looking around and there's nothing for them. No cars, no people, no houses. If they drive through at night, there's no lights anywhere. And it freaks them out. This is what makes French Glen such a gem. It's the front door to Oregon's Outback, unless you live in the Outback. In that case, the Steens is your first line of defense. <laughs>